Ooh, hello, hyperspace. My name is Devontos, and it's time to get heights because this is some Modern Warfare Battle Royale gameplay. Now, I know I said I'm going to be posting a lot of my thoughts and opinions videos, but I've been asked this quite a bit. How the hell do I keep winning Battle Royales? When I post H1Z1 gameplay, when I used to back in the day, I was always coming in first or like the top five. I'm posting Modern Warfare right now, and you're going to see in this one, I'm going to come in first here too. So a lot of people are asking me, how do I keep winning these Battle Royales? What do you do? What's your trick? Do you cheat? Are you a hacker? It's simple. It's very, very simple. And there's a couple things you guys need to know if you want to win these Battle Royales, specifically in Modern Warfare, because a lot of people have a lot in their arsenal, specifically C4s, Growls, M4s and stuff like that, but there's a couple things you gotta keep in mind if you want to have the the upper hand on the competition. So, first things first, your class loadout. This is just an example class loadout, I'm gonna post it right over here. One of my favorite weapons, the Foul. Not because the Foul is OP, because I've actually been using the Foul since since Modern Warfare's release, you know, back when the Foul was trash. But it got a lot of buffs, it's OP now, and I think it's still a very versatile, reliable weapon. Now, you want to have a very versatile weapon on your first slot, either a Fowl, a Kilo, a Growl, just something that can be used in all of all occasions, I guess? Close range, long range. You want to have a Bazooka, specifically the Strilla. I know a lot of people use the RPG, but the downside with the RPG is the, the rocket travels way too slow. The Strilla, it travels really quick, you can hit the target quickly, and it's very accurate. I mean almost laser accurate. There's a little bit of bullet drop, or should I say rocket drop, but it's it's you get used to it over time. Code blooded and ghost because everybody's gonna be running kill streaks and everybody's gonna be running um, UAVs and heartbeat sensors and spotter. Because when you're playing battle royale, specifically solos, a lot of people like to put some bombs all over the floor. So you can hack it and make it your own. C4 because it has just a large explosive radius. If you don't want to use C4, I would suggest using thermites, Molotov or Semtex. Now, Semtex can be used like C4s, but the reason I want them fire bombs is in case you gotta fish somebody out of a hiding spot. Usually when you see somebody and start shooting, they run in, well, they run into hiding somewhere, just throw the fire bomb in there, burn them out, they'll get out eventually. And a heartbeat sensor. Now, the heartbeat sensor can be used, well, as a heartbeat sensor, but if you want to play at more ranged combat, because your gun is versatile at close, medium, and long range, you can switch out the heartbeat sensor to that spotter scope that's exclusive to the Battle Royale. Now, this is basically your your basic loadout. Now, you might notice that the FAO has no attachments. That's because it's all about preference. Some people need a dot sight on the FAO, some people don't. I, I specifically don't. But, you know, just your weapon, as long as it's versatile. And next up is your piece of equipment. When you're scavenging through the Battle Royale and you're opening up these loot crates, the main piece of equipment that you're looking for is this. A trophy system! You don't need nothing but a trophy system. No dead silence, no ammo crate, no armor boxes, nothing. And the reason it's specifically a trophy system is for the vehicles. Let me show you what to do with these trophy systems. They block projectiles, obviously up to three, and they stay present in Warzone for ten minutes. You can place it on top of the ATV directly in the center. If you find yourself a truck as such, which is, I would say, it's one of the best vehicles to use, you want to place your trophy system on the line. Now, the reason for this is because the trophy system has a specific radius in which it can block projectiles, and it has to be able to, I would say, see the projectile, or the projectile has to be within its line of sight. Moving on to the little buggy thingy. Now, this one's going to be a little tricky, but you want to climb on top of the little buggy thingy and place it on this back platform. The reason I want to do it here is because it's the easiest place to put it on, and it's the highest, and you want to have some bit of elevation so it can see the bombs coming. Then you're free to enter your little buggy and drive around. Now we're going to move on to the helicopter. The helicopter is going to be a little difficult, but it just takes a little practice to actually get it right. Here's a little chopper boy. And with the chopper, you actually want to put it on top of the windshield, not inside. As I said, the trophy system has to be able to see the projectile coming in order to block it. So you want to put it right there. Aim on top of the propellers and just throw it. And it should stick on the windshield. Now the trick with the chopper is you're still vulnerable from the back. However, if you know a missile is coming, it's going to give you a notification, Incoming missile. So when you see that, if you don't see anything coming from the front, you would see the missile from the light and a big puff of smoke behind it. And just simply turn around and the trophy system will block it and then turn back around and continue on your chopper adventure. And so the chopper is, I would say it's the most difficult to use, but you, you get used to it pretty quick once you have that notification of Incoming missile. Now, last one is the big giant truck. Now, this one's a very large vehicle and the trophy system cannot protect everything. So, if you place it on the bed, it can't block the uh, uh, projectiles. You want to place it on that. That little 
flat beam in the back of the truck, you want to place it there because most bazookas, or most players who shoot these bazookas, aim for center mass, and the center mass of the truck is like the first half of the bed, or the body. So if you place your trophy system there, it should block most projectiles. As I said, the trophy system stays present for 10 minutes, and I believe it just takes like 45 seconds to charge, assuming you're playing plunder. But, yeah, you don't really need anything else. However, there is one trick I want to tell you with stopping power. If you happen to be playing Battle Royale, and you find stopping power, load your weapon with the stopping power rounds, and then pick up your trophy system again. You can do that with both weapons, your rifle and whatever you have for a secondary. Always load your gun with stopping power, and then pick up your trophy system and carry on. So, back to the main point of this video. What do I do that makes me always come in the top 5, 4, or even 1st place in every Battle Royale? The secret is to wait. Just stay by the smoke. I know it seems like a coward's way, but hear me out. Stay by the smoke. Let everybody kill each other first. Because not a lot of people are going to be staying by the smoke. If they do, they're waiting just like you. And when you do move up, you know, when the smoke starts advancing and you got to push forward, make sure the smoke is literally like right on your ass. You don't, you don't go in the smoke, you don't go too far up ahead, you just stay as close to the ring as possible. Let everybody go kill each other. If you see enemies in the distance, and they don't see you. Do not engage. The last thing you want to do is attract attention. You want to stay hidden, you want to stay stealthy, and just just let everybody go and kill each other. And then at the very end, you just take out the last two or three people and you got yourself a nice little win! I mean, it's all about being the last man standing, so anything goes. And if you happen to find, let's say, like Claymores or, or Bettys, and let's say you're, you are running your C4, if you happen to find them, Claymores or Petties, just, you know, pick them up, put them on a little booby trap, and then go back and pick up your C4. Now, as you can see, you always want to mark your next destination. You see, I'm marking, I think that was a gas station right there. And I'm in a truck, so I'm being kind of careless because it has all that armor and the trophy system. And that's it. Just sit there, just camp, set booby traps, and let everybody kill themselves. You actually see I'm getting shot right now, but, I mean, it doesn't matter because of my big, beefy senpai truck. And I go hiding in this position where he's forced to either take my truck, which is fine because there's another vehicle not too far from here, or come into the building where I'm at and I will have the upper hand because he won't know where I'm going to be camping. And you see, just park the truck. Don't break windows. Let everybody else break windows. That way you'll hear them coming. Because when the doors open, you would hear it, and when the windows shadow you shatter, you'll hear it. So just sit back, relax. Check your little heartbeat sensor, which he's all out of range at the moment. He's going to come into range soon. And just wait. Let the pawns go first. Just let them all kill each other. You goof around trying to jump on tables, seeing if you can find some handy little glitches or whatever, and just let them go. Just let everybody kill each other. And that's, that's basically what I'm doing here. Ba basically, the rest of the gameplay is going to be me hiding until the very end. And one thing you want to keep in mind. When it starts getting to the end game, pun intended, uh, you will not need your trophy system because everything's... Well, you might need your trophy system, yeah, depending on the situation. So, sometimes you might be a little sneaky, sometimes you might need your trophy system because everybody's going to be going very aggressive. If you don't need your trophy system towards the end, you want to use Dead Silence. That way you won't be relying on crouch walking and moving super slow. Just pop Dead Silence, get to wherever you need to be quickly, and that's it. So, trophy system first. Equip stopping power if you ever find it, and if you don't need the trophy system, always use dead silence. One thing that's crucial that I don't really see a lot of people doing is making sure your weapon and your character is camouflaged. For example, I think I'm using Ishkra in this game, and Ishkra has a green jacket and black pants. That's fine, the green camouflages with the green bushes, and the black pants camouflages with the shadow of the bushes. I also tend to use Nikto, who has the same colors, so he camouflages the same way. I see... I see people using those COD World League skins, and they're running around in like a white t-shirt and orange pants. And you see them trying to trying to run through like the green forest dressed in white. Uh, it's like they get killed and they wonder why they spotted. Is it because you ain't camouflaged? Same thing with your gun. If you have gold camo or any other camo unlocked, just use whatever camo is closest to woodland or just pop woodland because, believe it or not, people will be able to see your gun. I know there's some funky camos in this game that's like white and blue. People will see that, especially if you got a big gun, like let's say an LMG or a bazooka. You don't want that big bazooka in your back like the Joker, and your Joker is white. 
you know, you want you want your gun to be camouflaged at all times. No matter how big or small it is, keep it camouflaged. That way you can hide in the bushes if necessary, because you never really know how the smoke is going to position itself. And there's you're not always going to have the best of cover. Sometimes you're going to find yourself hiding in a bush or next to a tree. So you always want to be camouflaged at all times. And you see here, I'm actually just watching the guy, see what he's going to do. And I'm, I'm not really worried about him because I have this big senpai truck, so I just ignore him. I just wanted to see where he is, what he's going to do. He's shooting the truck, but he's just wasting his ammo. So, into the pick office building I go. Back to camping. And that's basically about it. Just just stay by the smoke, go stealthy, camp. Just wait, let everybody kill themselves, and that's it. Find stopping power, equip it. And one thing, don't rely on your heartbeat sensor too much. Because you never really know who's going to be using Ghost. So the Harpy Sensor is very powerful in the beginning. And maybe there's some dumb player who ain't got Ghost at the very end. So you can use it sometimes. But just don't rely on it for everything. You see I'm using it to check if the building is clean. But even after the thing is scanning the building. And it shows me that it's clean. I pause right here. Because I said to myself. Okay. Somebody can still be using Ghost. And hiding in these offices. So I took a 50-50 chance and specifically face one way. And check all those offices. If I'm shot from behind I can just sprint and go to cover. But you see I'm not relying on the heartbeat sensor for everything. And that's it. You you don't really gotta do much. Just make sure everybody kills himself. And you stay in the back and you watch. And you steal the win at the end. Now this isn't gonna work all the time. But I can guarantee this is gonna get you probably within the top. Assuming you do it right. You're probably gonna get within I'd say the top. 10 maybe and well i guess i could just tell you what i'm doing here so you know what i'm up to i'm actually checking for that guy who was shooting at me by the gas station i'm also checking out here to see if there's anyone outside by those uh orange cranes because i know it's a popular sniper spot other than that i stay here the reason i stay up here is because the only way they can see me if they're not looking up when they come from the bottom is through the window that's across to my left so occasionally i would check the window if not i just camp up here wait for the smoke to uh come in now, the smoke is actually going to uh, consume Senpai truck, so I can't go back and get her. However, there's another truck right outside, and when I was coming in, I saw that truck was blue, which means somebody already used it, which means there's a chance it can be booby-trapped. Speaking of booby-traps, that's something you want to do with your C4. If you got a C4, and you got to abandon your vehicle, and you do plan on going back and using it again, booby-trap your vehicle with the C4. The instant it turns red, Detonate your C4, you got yourself a free kill, because the vehicles turn red when other players use it. So if you got to abandon your vehicle for whatever reason, just make sure you booby trap it. Put the C4 in a spot where nobody's really going to look, like under the vehicle, or like maybe inside the helicopter, like on the passenger seat. Just a place where nobody's really going to see it. So I'm just waiting over here. Loadout incoming, I don't need that. And I noticed the other dude isn't coming because my heartbeat sensor would have scanned him by now, and ain't nobody coming through the smoke. So just wait. Sit back. And wait, let everybody take care of himself. And the smoke should be closing in, what, 25 seconds? So sit back and wait. Now, one thing, the growl isn't as good as it used to be, but the growl is still pretty, pretty versatile. Before, the growl was the superior from the growl, the kilo, and the M4. Now, you have the M4 for close range, the growl for medium range, and the kilo is the best long range, um, full auto rifle aside from the odin because the odin got some ridiculous range but not a lot of people use the odin you know there is actually a lot of weapons that's very good in warzone that not a lot of people use i'm actually going to rush to the truck right now i'm hoping it's not booby trap because i needed to go across the lake but uh about the weapons in warzone that not a lot of people use and it's actually really really good the odin it's very good the ak-47 is ridiculously op you just gotta know how to use it because it's very difficult to use and uh, that MG, I think it's called the SA, SA-87, it's the small MG with like an assault rifle clip. That one's also really, really good. Those are three guns that's very powerful in Warzone and not a lot of people use it. Specifically the MGs. MGs are very powerful and as I said, nobody uses them. Try, try using MGs next time you guys play uh, Warzone. Whether it's plunder, blah, blah, I cannot talk. Whether it's plunder. Oh, Battle Royale. Yes, try using an MG. It's it's pretty fun. So what is Devontos doing here? Devontos is actually just hiding. Waiting. And I actually throw a C4 because this is the only way in and out of this little safe room. And once they come in, I could detonate it. But I remember, they can still shoot me from outside the hall, as you can see. So I gotta play it smart. Where can I place my C4 in a position where I can blow them up regardless if they come out to peek or if they come in to engage? And I thought, the table... I can place it right there. 
it'll camouflage with the garbage. The garbage is actually covering it. And if I see them and engage, they're either going to do two things. Back out of the room into the C4. Or come into the room and I'll engage and have the upper hand because I landed the first few shots when they came through the doorway. So you got to use your surroundings. And again, checking the heartbeat sensor just in case. And I'm always staying near the end of the, uh, the ring, the smoke ring. It's almost time to move up. Make sure my bazooka got enough ammo. And when I do move up, I always take the C4 because you never know when it's going to come in handy. One thing about the TAC laser. The TAC laser is really, really powerful in Warzone. A lot of people are worried about the TAC laser giving away their position. But the TAC laser is visible up to a pretty long range. But the TAC laser moves with your character model. And if you actually pay attention to character models in Call of Duty, they move a lot. So regardless of you're staying still, your character is like moving his shoulders and looking around. So the TAC laser will be moving around just as much as he is. So it's not something that's... uh going to stay pinpoint accurate, perfectly still, and visible to everybody. If your character is moving around, and ADS, so is attack laser. Just just look at a teammate when he's aiming down sight, and you're going to see how much his shoulders are moving. You'll get a rough idea on how the attack laser is moving as well. And you can't hear it now because I'm commentating, but there's a lot of gunfire near me, which is why I pulled out the heartbeat sensor, and I'm just waiting, letting them all go and eliminate each other. And then I come out of nowhere and steal the win. Now, one good example why you should never rely on the heartbeat sensor 100%. You saw that the heartbeat sensor didn't scan anybody. However, I hear some footsteps in the room, so I go investigate, and there was somebody on the other side of the bathroom that had ghost. And I, he almost takes me out. But I get the other hand, and I take him out first. So that's why you should never rely on the heartbeat sensor for everything. Now, one quick tip. Uh, when the smoke is closing, and there's, let's say... Let's say the last two people, you and one guy, and you have a, a rough idea on where that guy can be and you're ready to engage him. When you do engage him for the final kill to steal the win, get him from the smoke. I mean you be in the smoke and you shoot him from the smoke because nobody's going to expect you to be in the smoke. Everybody wants to get out of the smoke at the very end so they can have the upper hand. So sneak up on him from the smoke. He won't expect it and you get yourself a nice win. I'm actually going to do that here. And every time you do kill somebody at the very end, be very, very quiet. The smoke is small, the battle zone is small, everybody will be able to hear your gun and your general location regardless if your weapon is suppressed. So that's why I killed him, I went to hiding, and I'm just staying quiet. Now, as I said, you can't hear anything because commentating. But the smoke's moving up, wait a little bit longer, how many people are left? I believe that's a three. I can't tell because my commentating TV is very small. But I think that's three people left, which means there's me and two more. Let them kill each other. Don't engage unless you have to. I peek out. There just happens to be a guy right there. Take him out. One more person. Into the smoke. I try to stay as close to the smoke as possible. Back into the smoke. And I use this to actually armor myself up because nobody's going to look in the smoke. So go in the smoke. Put on the armor plates to have the upper hand at the final round, and stay there. Listening carefully, and I hear him a little bit on the right side, so I just wait for the smoke to catch up. Once the smoke catches up, I go in the smoke, steal the win. In the smoke, there he is. He's not looking at me. Steal the win, and there you go. Simple. Nobody expects you to be in the smoke. Everybody falls for it, and it works every time. So if you like this video, punch that like button. With a mighty force. Hope you learned a couple things from here. You can follow me up on Twitter at Devontos Man. And as always, I'll see all of you in the next video. Have a nice day.